Hello, and um, welcome back to the spaceship for this um, series of films about the mole and mole calculations. Um, this first film is really just a short introduction to, uh, to the mole itself, and hopefully by the end of this film you will have an understanding of what exactly we mean by a mole and how it relates to Avogadro's number, and hopefully to have some idea of the scale that these, of, of these numbers that we're talking about, because they're really quite enormous numbers. Um, they seem like small quantities that we they can deal with in chemistry, but when you think of um, visible substances counted in these numbers, they really become quite enormous. So here we are. What is Avogadro's number? Well, Avogadro was um, an Italian chap who did lots of work on gases. Um, he was working around about the same time as um, Priestley and Lavoisier, who were also working on gases. And anyway, he decided. Um, that there were 6.022 times 10 to the 23 atoms in one gram of hydrogen. Okay, so he, because he came up with this number, it was named after him, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, or roughly 6 times 10 to the 23, or in other words, 6 with 22, 20, sorry, 23 zeros after it. Okay, so it's big number, okay, but just how big that is, we'll see in just a minute. It's not a number you have to remember, okay, you will need to use this number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23, but it's not a number you will absolutely have to remember, because it is printed on the data sheet. Anyway, if you're talking about atoms, you don't really have to have a lot of stuff to have that number of atoms, so as we've said, about a gram of hydrogen will contain this many hydrogen atoms. Okay, but if you're talking about things you can actually see, like drinks cans or popcorn kernels, to choose a couple of examples, right? Um, and you had Avogadro's number of these things. So if you had a mole of drinks cans or you had a mole of popcorn, that is to say, you had six times ten to six point oh two two times ten to the twenty three of these things. Just how much would that be? Well, give you an idea. If you had drinks cans, so just cans of Coke, and uh, you had this number of them, you'd be able to form a blanket of drinks cans that would cover the entire planet. So not just the land surface, but the water surface as well. Stood side by side, you'd be able to cover the entire planet with drinks cans. And then you'd be able to put another layer on top of that and cover the entire planet again. And you still wouldn't have run out. In fact, you'd be able to make... 5,000 layers of Coke cans on the surface of the planet, adding up to a blanket about 200 meters thick, okay, if you had this number of Coke cans. If you had this many popcorn kernels, well, you could, uh, if you had them in some giant bucket, <laughs> um, you could empty that bucket out onto Australia, and um, you could cover the entire surface of Australia in popcorn kernels. Okay, but not only could you do that, you could then, if you kept pouring out your bucket, eventually you would cover Australia in a layer, I have to check this one because I calculated it earlier, uh, you could cover Australia in a layer of popcorn kernels 80 metres thick. Okay, so these, this is really is an absolutely enormous number. Apparently if the entire population of the Earth had started counting up to this number, at a rate of one number per second, at the beginning of the universe, um, we still wouldn't have got there, apparently. But anyway. So, just quickly to finish, a definition of a mole. Okay, this is the number of particles in exactly, it used to be defined in terms of hydrogen, but it's now in 12 grams of carbon-12. Okay? So one isotope of carbon is used as the definition of what a mole is. This is the number of particles, the number of carbon atoms, in 12 grams of this isotope of carbon. So in other words, what these numbers tell us in the periodic table is something to do with the mass of one mole of that material. You might notice that the relative atomic mass of carbon in the periodic table is not exactly 12. Okay, that means that the average mass of carbon atoms is this. Remember, this is just one isotope, so this is the mass number of that isotope. Okay, and the mole is defined in terms of this isotope, not in terms of carbon. Okay, but this number does tell us something very important, 
about carbon, it tells us that one mole of it weighs 12.011 grams. And we'll be using that fact a lot when we do all the calculations with the mole. Okay, but that's an introduction to the mole. Uh, a good place for you to go next would be the film that uh, deals with, um, uh, what's it called? It's called uh, Moles and Particles. And it deals with some symbols that we use when we're talking about the mole and how we convert one thing into another.